His filmography is gonna speak to films like Deadly Voyage, Inspector Bediako, Big Man Wahala, The Other Side of the Rich Sin City. He's a Ghanaian actor, director, philanthropist, and a producer. I just wanna love you. Share with me your problems. Girl, you are the type of girl a bad man. And I remember he also contested for the role of, uh, I think, a deputy of creative arts minister or something like that. Yeah, and he's found himself in a bevy of beautiful women when he played judge on GMB. But the man is philanthropic, I can tell you. It's one of those he reached out and he started dash money like that, just like that. Yeah. When you see me in town today, you can ask me for money. The thing is that you don't see me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oscar Provencal, welcome to the studios of Joy 99.7, sir. Thank you for having me, my, my brother. It's, it's, you it's, already it's, confused me. You already telling me I'm dashing money and throwing money around. It's but you're a philanthropist. I wish. Throw some my way right now. Don't worry. Philip just brought some plenty dollars from, um, where's have you go? No, Maldives uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, and Dubai. So uh, he, he sort us out. He sort us out. But how have you been? I've been good, my brother. I think like everybody else, we're all trying to survive and reconfigure ourselves after COVID. And, you know, um, we're all trying to fit ourselves into this big jigsaw puzzle of the world that we live in today. And with its new paradigms of, uh -huh. you know, um, yeah, you know what's happened yeah. with, 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 the, with the world these yeah, days. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. We're all just trying to fit in and see how we can get along. We were in Ghana, minding uh, TV, watching our Sofu Dazi, watching our Obra and every... Oh, let me also welcome Uncle Kennedy. Uncle Ken, my bad. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Good I'm fine, uh, Is Liverpool winning today? I hope so. Uh, because you lost. Uh, Chelsea also lost. No, I'm talking about you. Who, me? I'm not interested in Chelsea. I, I Manchester won't United. But, but me, I don't... Oh, Manchester United lost. Yeah, you didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. This morning, ah. I was following cricket. Bangladesh was playing on Olulu. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping we win. Oh, okay. These days I've found new love in cricket. So uh, now, that you, you, cricket? now that you've mentioned cricket, yes. I'm the vice president of the Ghana Cricket Association. You see? So we need your support. You see? Are you Don't really? worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. We just came back from Rwanda. We won a tournament. Oh, oh wow. And the nine, uh, senior national team. I we, see. We, uh, ah, we wait, so Rwanda. Ghana has a team that is actually winning cups. No, Ghana yes. has a cricket team that's been partaking yeah. all over the continent. Yeah. And another team is you walking know, around drinking milu. My, my... Uh, <laughs> Let's not get into that. Yeah. <laughs> my brother that's in a whole law, different ball game altogether. <laughs> my brother-in-law was the chairman of the cricket, uh, Dr. Uh, William Ampofo. Okay. Professor William yes. Ampofo. Mm. Willie P. Yeah, Willie. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And, uh, I love cricket. I spent so much time watching cricket and... My household, well, just at least can't we've, understand. we've got one person. You've got one, you know, we've got they don't one understand fan. how hiding I in the corners watching. who loves the game. And oh, we're yes, to fish them out. So yes, yes, fantastic. Yes. We'll talk after the program. we'll talk. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, so let's get on with it then. I mean, as I was saying earlier on, um, we were watching our Obra, our Sofu Dazi, uh, Joe Spear and his people, and then all of a sudden, we heard there was going to be a sudden show on TV called Inspector Bediakon. We saw, um, the late um what's his name how has the name escaped me oh my goodness godwin kote godwin. exactly oh, sorry. yes yeah, 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 akushia yeah. abdella these are people we've known and then there was this man fine man with this uh, very sweet accent and um i mean great voice and everything Charlie, i mean where did you appear from all of a sudden so let us speak who was Oscar before Inspector Bediakon? Let us take it from there. Uh, that's 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 a that's a good question. I um, I've never really dwelt over who who I was, and you know I still don't do it these days. Mm. But I guess I was just somebody who was like everybody else at the time. We were young. Um, we had talents. We tried to find avenues and platforms to express our talent. Um, we were given opportunities to whom I owe. A, you know, a depth of gratitude to a whole load of people who have given me the opportunity and the platform to to be able to be called by Joy FM and say, "Hey, Joy FM wants to interview you." You know, yeah. Um, it's not it's not by self, it's not by might. It's a lot of grace that has gone into it. And you and I know that in this industry, you go up against one thousand people for one role. True. 
And so whenever I talk about the God factor, it's not a religious factor, but it's the uh, probability factor that starts even with creation. <laughs> and so if you are selected, you know, from from uh, inception and you are created, you, you, you are the one who has come out, George, versus the billions that were wasted. <laughs> you should understand where I'm coming from. It's not been easy. So, yeah, um, I think that I've just been uh, blessed and, um, you know, had a lot of grace, good people around me who saw talent. Um, but before then, I was just a young guy walking around to uh, uh, the art center, walk from Osu to the art center, got involved with the uh, Ghana Actors Guild, you know, and drama clubs and so forth there. Fred Amugi, David Donto, Wakeford Akwaku, all these guys, Ajete Anan as well. Met all those guys there. And that fed into what I really wanted to do. And so I was given an opportunity. Um, Did you join any particular group? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe I did. Um, a group belonging to Mr. Anson Menu, okay. the late Anson, Anson Menu, Menu yeah. and he was yeah. a huge, huge mentor. Yeah. Um, and I credit him with a lot of the, the uh, you know, the impartation of teaching of, you know, drama, you know, acting, theatrical acting. That, was and that so was forth. that Meros? I'm trying to no, remember was it the name. Meros, um, can you believe I've, I've actually? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. You caught me off guard. I there guess. was um, the. Uh, Royal Theatre Company, yes. there was Tubones, there was Cozy Cozy Theatre Company, yes. there was um, Theatre Mirrors, there was... Oh, um, okay. I've, honestly, I'm I... I'm trying I, to... Uh, no, no. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it was it was through there that, you know, you mixed with producers who, who were also actors in those days and everybody was talking about film. And then Ghana Films Industry Corporation was there and they were also looking for actors to you know, take part in their production. So we used to hang out at GFIC at the time, which is now TV3, which is another question mark we'll have to deal with later <laughs> on. Um, <coughs> since it was sold to them. <laughs> okay, let me keep my thoughts straight. Oh, for now, yeah. And <laughs> so, you know, because we used to hang out there and the producers and, you know, everybody in the industry used to hang out there, somebody saw your talent and gave you an opportunity. In this partic particular case, they had already started filming Inspector Bediaku, and there was a gentleman called Ray, Bediaku Ray, okay. who had been selected as the first inspector. Um, and so I was called on to play Soa. And so we began filming, and somewhere along the line, he had to leave to go to the U.S. I oh, dear. to join the U.S. Army or something like that. And it left a vacuum. And obviously, uh, it's very difficult for... A person playing a character who's already playing a known character to jump into another character's, um, you know, role. But they took a chance on me, and I guess that um, I'm very grateful to Mr. Kojo Yanka and Mr. Chrissy Yanka and Dateline and all the guys there who who took that chance on me. And today I'm here not because of myself, but because of the opportunity that they gave me. And um, I'm truly grateful for that. You speak very well. I mean, your pronunciations, your accent, everything. Did you live outside at some point or something? Yeah, I mean, in my early years, I lived in the UK, went to school in the UK. And okay. so I had a fairly solid, solid background there. Um, I used to win a lot of reading, you know. Contests. Reading contests and stuff like that. So I grant that, you know, I, I still, I used to talk very much like a very British boy when I came you know back in 17 just after the coup in 79 and uh i used to talk like your accent was pretty hot in it oh it was in it, in <laughs> it. but i i was i was somebody and my brother still talks a little bit like that somehow okay. with, 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 with a british accent. accent um but i got involved with you know the guys on the ground and we we were a bit rebellious um, we started speaking pidgin English in school, mm -hmm. which they didn't like, mm -hmm. you know, at the Ghana International School and so forth. Um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I'm just grateful that God gave me this repertoire, came from my father, has the same kind of voice, and in my family, uh, my mother has a deep voice. Um, and so, you know, you, you try and figure out what do you do with these talents once you have them. Yeah. You know, if you've got a good background in reading, and, and you find out that it was not just about reading, it was about interpreting. Mm -hmm. And so I was given opportunities from um, 
the late Jacob Bechelantes. Yeah, the uh, late Jacob Bechelantes. That's Lentus. Lentus. Yeah. And great people like Maggie and um, Ivan Kwashiga and a few others, you know, really opened the door for me. And they gave me opportunities to do adverts. I remember doing a protector condom advert yeah. with the current uh, uh, presidential what candidate for <laughs> which of the parties? Uh, Bridget. <laughs> Bridget uh, is it Jogbenu? Jogbenu. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. did that, yeah. and and a whole host of you know um, productions that we did and voiceovers and things like that. And so, uh, you know, you 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 just have to look back and say, wow, it's been an amazing ride. You're grateful to the people who gave you the opportunities. And sometimes you're there and the opportunities just come out of the sky and you realize that there's no way it is you. It is only by grace. Today, if I sit down and somebody thinks of me, I was sitting in my somewhere, uh, Philip called me and said, hey man, why don't you do an interview? If you think it's because of you, yeah. then you've lost the plot. It means it's for be somebody to think about you, to give you an opportunity, to give you a platform, um, then it's only it's only grace. From the UK to Ghana International School, you sound like somebody who comes from a very privileged background. Um, why the performing arts? You could have been anything else you wanted to be. Absolutely. I mean, but you see, we are all given gifts. Not all of us find out what those gifts are. Early, in fact, I wanted to be. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was a sportsman as well. Okay. I did about nine, ten events, you know, mm. um, and I was always winning events. I still have cups that I have to go back and collect from my school in the yeah. UK for wow. hundred meters and high jump and stuff like that. And I wanted to be a decathlon athlete. Yeah, wow. but when I came to Ghana, I was doing nine events. I didn't do pole vault, and I wanted to add pole vault to it. But when I went to the uh, to the stadium uh -huh. to go and try it out, Charlie, I looked at the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the ground. I said, "This one, I'll turn it to an chair if I miss it." <laughs> so, the so mattress was inspiring. That that completely put my <laughs> decathlon dreams away, you know. And I I was running with guys like Miles Mills and all those guys. Um, I was actually called to the to the national team for trials. Wow. Yes, I remember. If I find that newspaper clipping. And there was a moment when we were doing intercore and stuff like that. I used to do high jump. And uh, in those days, you wouldn't see a single piece of fat on me. I was like chiseled. And then when I start warming up on the track, then the whole stadium is shouting, Wow. Oh, be papa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be papa. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I mean, I was so I was so muscular and I was so, you know, I mean, I was so chiseled in those days. And yeah. I, yeah, I inspired people to start bodybuilding. Building. But I never did bodybuilding. I was just athletically built that because I was doing all those events. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually I ran for um, uh, Aquinas School and for the first time, in their history, I think they came second or so in uh, Intercore because of my my you exploits. Know, exploits. So, you know, but that quickly ended because at the end of the day, uh, we had to concentrate on our education, and uh, we just moved forward. But I knew from day one, my passion, my peace, my joy. My everything was in the creative arts. And, and that so, is where so I want to find out. Because somebody from a privileged background, parents insisting you pursue education, you used to win reading contests and all that, they probably were looking at a lawyer or a doctor or something like I'm that. How did they feel about you deciding to be a creative? Um, and how did they take it? I, I, I guess I was pretty much supported um, in as much as I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Um, the bottom line was to make sure that I did it and I did it well, uh -huh. you know, and I hope that, um, my mother took a chance on, on me. And today, hopefully I can say that, uh, she's, a, she's hopefully proud of her son, uh, for getting this far and making the contribution that I've made to the creative space. And uh, for me, that, that is all that matters. Those who, you know, have sweated and toiled 
um, to bring you up, look after you, pay your school fees, you know, give you the love and the attention that you needed to, to thrive. Uh, at the end of the day, nothing matters apart from seeing the joy and the happiness in their eyes and also in the eyes of your children. For me, nothing else matters. Have I, you made really money from being a creator? I don't care what anybody else said. You Have know, you made that money? That's my greatest pride and joy. Have you made money from being a creator? No. I mean, look, let's, let's put it this way. You and I both know that the creative space is a huge space. Um, and the answer to that is no. Has, have I been able to build a house from the creative space? No. Have others? Yes. Everybody has had their opportunities. Some have made mistakes. Some have been able to leverage off it. You know, um, but from the film industry, absolutely no. We were like uh, pioneers, sacrificial lambs back in those days. We did it for the passion. We didn't do it for the money. Um, and, you know, if we go back into how much we were paid back in those days, I mean, it was survival money, really. I mean, you really couldn't do much with it. Um, but along the way, I've, as we grow older, we begin to realize that, look, it's not just about the money. If you are um, favored enough, you should be able to use your platform leverage that platform. There have been greats way before us, and we're not even in the greats category, who have been revered nation, you know, on a yeah, nation on the national scale. level. From they have access to every level of society yeah. from the presidency all the way down to the yeah. chieftaincy and to their community. Yeah. The question is how do we leverage these things and back in the days maybe we were only interested in the in the fun and the you know and the fame but i remember david donta and myself taking trotra from adenta back in the day i remember when some of us bought our first cars you know it, it, it you know it was a whole thing hey charlie Somebody buy cow. <laughs> it was a big deal. But then you find out that the person didn't buy it from the industry. Uh -huh. The person was working and doing something else and, you know, and so forth. So for me, it behooves on the next generation to begin to understand that it is all not fun and games, that you need to carefully plan your life. You need to be able to leverage the platforms that you have been given you know, and whether you you veer into uh, emceeing or corporate emceeing or you do modeling uh, in terms of billboards or you do voiceovers, or you, there's a whole repertoire, you know, of things that you can do within the creative space. In addition to advocacy, preparing yourself if you have the mindset towards advocacy and what it takes you know, to be able to, you know, do the advocacy uh, thing. So, um, yeah, but we are no different from anybody else or in any, any other uh, community in this country that is looking to leverage off whatever they have gained through either their education or through God's talent. The question is, do we have the leadership, uh -huh. the guidance, you know, and are the people willing to listen and moving unity with one purpose, with one purpose. towards the destination. That's, we're that's, gonna come back to speak to um, some of the movies that you worked on. I know you were in Deadly Voyage. Um, yeah. How you got that connect, and then um, what you remember the most on audition day for Inspector Bidiako. Before we do that, Three. take a listen to this. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> so what comes to mind anytime you hear this tune? Oh God, it's 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 nostalgic, that's for sure. I, I look, back in the day we really didn't know 
that we we would be revered like this. I mean, we were just doing our thing, and I just spoke to Echo Bedu, who's in America, who played so mm -hmm. as a great, great friend of mine. Um, and uh, there's a message that he sent to me. I think it probably okay. it probably sums it all up. Let, let, let me let me just um, yes, if you don't mind, let me just uh, yes, read um, it out to please, you. Please, please, please do. And do. I hope he's listening because I said yeah. he should. Yeah. And he says, look. Yes, the show did change my life. I became acutely aware of crime and how it can manifest into a consistent, uncontrollable pestilence in a community. Interesting. And that was from him this afternoon. Very interesting. You know, and so, um, you know, once again, I mean, we were, we were just following our passion. We didn't know the impact that it had on the Ghanaian psyche and the Ghanaian community. Um, and that also tells us that each and every one of us who has this platform, including yourself, including all the people that are in this space, are impacting on people's lives. The question is, are we impacting positively or negatively? Uh -huh. And so as a creative space, we need to find out, are we working in the national interest at the end of the day, or we're we working against it? And I think that as we pass the stage of the fame and the glory we must think of higher ideals and how we can contribute you know how the creative space and con contribute to uh, national development do you for for some of us that's where we that's where, where we we're going to yeah. speak industry shortly but do you recall exactly what happened on your first audition day maybe for inspector Bidiaco? yeah yeah let's let's um, focus on inspector think of it. um you know back then uh th there was a gentleman who was a co-writer for, for the series, a black American gentleman. And he had wanted to introduce Capora. I don't know if you if I'm saying it right. It's a Brazilian martial arts. Okay. You know, yeah. they, they play some sort of, you uh, know, mm. fiddle or something yeah. and they dance and they And, and they, they swing fly and through their legs, legs and stuff all over about, the place. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, you know, art form. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we were required to do that. <laughs> My brother, I, mean, I couldn't coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> that was at the audition. That was at the audition. Wow. I couldn't coordinate, and that's that's how he got the role to play, in the inspector. He was the best one at doing the capora. The capora, okay. You know, and so you know, I, I remember that day, and I thought, wow, if I had only researched on on this, it was a little bit like karate, but mm -hmm. you know. If it's not there, it's not there. If you had contacted Jesse Japong, he would have. He's a black belt. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese cinema, Fu Manchu. Uh, I tell you. Black belt or original black belt? No, no, that's my original. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Jesse. Uh, oh, you know we black. Uh, but you know the days of opera when you go and watch a Chinese film and then you're way back and everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go for Twit. <laughs> 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 interesting interesting yeah. so that was what was required at the audition yes, at, at, at that time that was what was required and um you know um i, I just couldn't do it and so uh, as as well as he could and and the rest of them so we all fell into our places here and there and the whole point really was i think that he introduced it so that we had a philosophy of not using violence uh -huh. if you realize you never saw any shooting or yeah. Um, glorification yeah. of violence yeah. in inspect. We wanted to portray that, you know, the black man was intelligent. He was capable of using his intelligence to solve crime and solve, you know, um, problems. And it still remains today our philosophy um, as we go forward, hopefully with, with a new remake in the making one of these days. If you just tuned in, you're listening to Showbiz A to Z right here on Joy 99.7 FM. And we're having a very beautiful conversation with one of Ghana's most respected um, creatives of all time, uh, Mr. Oscar Provençal. He's an actor, director, philanthropist and producer. And he's right here in the studios with us. We're also um, in the studio with Mr. Jesse Amwe Japong. Jesse, yes, I haven't welcomed you. Welcome. How are you doing? Uh, yes, uh, can we oh, uh, check on just yeah, your microphone is working now. Great. Uh, how's the week? Uh, it's been fantastic. Shall it two weeks? It will. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, other equally important uh, issues took my attention. Mm -hmm. um, we, we ourselves weren't here. We're, we're, we're dashing houses at the Habitat Fair. 
Oh, Joy FM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How they, how so Joy FM with Echo Bank. Know. The Habitat Fair. No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I I like to listen to myself. So if I'm not talking, I don't like to. Next week, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is this. Uh, is, this no, it's just a joke. We don't. <laughs> we next week, like that here, next week yeah. join us at. Um, we are going to be at Junction Mall. Yeah, mm. at the Habitat Fair, the last mini clinic. Yeah, come there. I might find you a two-bedroom house. It will not be bad. It yeah, be bad. I'll I find you a two-bedroom house. In these times, I need it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You've met Oscar? Uh, before today. Uh, yes, have you? Before today, you hadn't met him before? No, the closest that I had gotten to was standing, you know, watching him on TV. So uh, You should get an autograph. Yes, so maybe we need to take some photos today. Like, it's very uh, important. <laughs> it is very important. Yes, um, Uncle Ken. Yeah. So um, you can, I mean, Oscar is here. Let me hold the rest of my questions for now. I'll let the panel uh, come in. Okay. Oh, Sadiq has also joined us. Sadiq, um, take, take, take a seat when you're ready. Yes. Uh, I would rather you carried on with Oscar because okay. I've known Oscar for too long. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know too much about Oscar. Interesting. So I want to... So you'd allow him to speak? <laughs> yeah, no, I want to talk to Oscar about other things. Okay. When you have okay. gone to... When we have... Uh, yes, yeah, we're almost when done you've though. exhausted... Great, 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 great. His we life story. <laughs> Deadly Voyage was a big movie in Ghana. Yes. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I think you were... Was it third assistant director or something? Third assistant director, yeah. How... I mean, how, how did you land that? that, that that's big. Yeah, well, um, you know, I once again, it's 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 Grace, and before that, we had we had a production called Dying of the Light. It yes. was a BBC production yes. that was a yes. co-production here in Ghana, done yes. by the Ghana Film Industry Corporation. Yeah, and so you know, I I got involved, you know, because of my uh, network, um, and uh, I was called upon to assist in in terms of facilitation of of the production and stuff like that. Um, and so I, actually for Deadly Voyage, I was also the um, casting, you know, director, casting director yeah, for yeah, Ghana. Yeah. And um, so I just found myself in a certain space and it gave new experiences because before then we hadn't done international productions of those levels. And so with Deadly Voyage, you know, it, it, it took us to a new level where we we felt that the industry would have taken off uh, and it actually did pave the way because um amistad yeah after deadly voyage and the success of deadly voyage amistad, amistad was another slave movie that was, yeah uh, to be produced here in ghana uh, unfortunately the powers that be at the time uh, decided that it was time to uh, do away with ghana films and sold it to the malaysians um, and the, what I heard was that on the day that they were, uh, the team was going to arrive in Ghana, uh, they were told that the, uh, pr uh, the GFC had, had been sold. And so they, they went to, I think, to South Africa or Senegal or somewhere to shoot Amistad. But that was, you know, $55 million production just gone. And, wow. you know, we, uh, yes, GFIC had been undercapitalized, wasn't well resourced. Um, but with Deadly Voyage and with the coming of Amistad, you'd have had, and the deals were that they were going to leave equipment and all that kind of thing. Um, we would have seen a revitalization of the Ghana film industry, bringing in a lot of co-productions. Unfortunately, we lost all of that and we know what the history is since then. Um, so we're still re reeling from, from those events. Let us speak to your work on um, Delhi Voyage. You were a casting director as well. How how did you get in contact with them? Who created the connect? And then um, how did you go about your role? Um, there, there was Johnny Carmichael, um, who was the lead facilitator, um, and I had been in touch with him. And you know, we, there's a lot of talk going on before the production. They were looking for people who could, they could work with. And my name popped up, and so. So we had a couple of meetings. And then Ernest Abakwe, um, yeah. the great Ernest Abakwe. The great Ernest Abakwe. And I also have to give him a lot of gratitude, you know, as well, because uh, he put in a word for me as well. And um, we worked together as a team, plus a whole host of other people to put the production together. Sleepless Nights was one of the toughest and grueling, <laughs> you know, grueling things you could never think of. You never thought, wow, 
film production, you know, takes up all your time and there's so many departments and so many uh, things that have yeah. to be done yeah. uh, and coordinated. And, um, well, success, we, we successfully, uh, you know, um, put it together. And uh, I think they won a couple of awards here and there. Um, and, uh, well, I guess the rest is we're still referring to it as one of the best productions that have come out of the shores of Ghana. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Finally, tell us about family life. Um, how does the family, I mean, married kids, how does the family take all the pressure? Daddy's not away, shooting and all those things. How do they cope? When we started, we weren't married. So, yes, it was it was easy as young people do. You, you move around. But when you get married and you have kids, in those days, it was early days. And so I was constantly on set, you know, moving from one film to another and so forth. So it was a bit tough. Yes, I guess it was a bit tough. And, you know, um, and we were young. We made mistakes here and there. Um, so... Sadly, my first marriage, my first marriage did not succeed. Um, but uh, thankfully, we have three kids. I have five kids, you know, um, and we have three uh, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic kids. They're the, the love of my life. Congratulations. And um, I'm really, 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 really proud of them. Some of, only, only one has taken after me in terms of the creative space. Oh, okay. Anne Marie, and um, she is very talented. How many girls? Two girls and three boys. Nice. You know, um, one has finished university. He's now working. I won't say where he's working. These days, they are <laughs> kid kidnappers and all things all over the place. Um, so you don't divulge all this kind of information, <laughs> information. by heart. Exactly. You know, um, yeah. two are doing the internship. Uh, uh, so, my, so, two of my girls are in a university. I won't okay. say which of the university. <laughs> 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 um, so, yes. And uh, my baby lass is doing his uh, uh, wasi and he'll be coming to join, you know, join the others. So, you know, I, God has been good. Congratulations. Been good. Congratulations. Been good. Now, let us come to the industry. I like where you took us to, the convo between the uh, selling of Ghana films and the opportunities that were coming. Now, I'm tempted to ask, the people that sold Ghana films, at the time they were going to sell, did they not know about all these opportunities that were coming? Or you they just the, couldn't the be bothered? people are still alive. Yes. Except one who has... Who has Gone. You must have given the green light, mm -hmm. but the rest are still around. Yeah. Uh, did they <laughs> so not maybe know? you should come and put them here and ask them <laughs> that question. <laughs> you know, so we don't. We absolutely don't know what the motive was. Um, and really, I mean, it's something that uh, quite a few times we've tried to um, take the legal route uh, to see if it can be reversed. And I'm sure that if Mr. Ernest Abakwe is listening today, he'll be going, yes, yes, let's put a team together and get our film industry back. Um, but yeah, um, sadly, for whatever reasons that they felt that, you know, they had to divest, I cannot point out what those reasons were. All I can say that uh, they destroyed a whole industry and an industry bequeathed by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah which has which served the nation an enormous purpose had enormous potential not only for national development but the creation of um you know jobs hundreds and hundreds of thousands of jobs um and you know um sadly today uh it's gone to the dogs but hey that's history um a lot of properties uh that went with the uh, ghana film industry corporation uh, we don't know what's happened to them. There were cinemas, uh, exhibition halls, and all kinds of things. It's a subject matter that we'll have to to really sit down and deal with. Um, but if if it's a lost cause, then let evolution take its place and let us evolve. I have engaged you on a number of um, things, you know, relating to our industry i mean we've been on battles for actors guild and all those things and i know you <laughs> very 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 passionate I see you have also got some of the gray hair so it i know where it is coming the from. battles <laughs> the battles all the industries are in court yes from musica to fipag to asok to gamru to everybody is in court guild, yes 
when you look back at what it was versus what it is today, how would you sum up our industry from your perspective? What do you think is wrong with the industry? That's if there's anything wrong okay. at all. Let me first put it in context. Um, as a nation, how old are we? Um, is it 64? 64? Or 65. Mm -hmm. Okay, when was the last time this nation was in court after elections? Um, that was the last election. 20, was it 2012? And right? The, that was 2012. Election, and the election before? Uh, no, I think the last time was 2012. Has it defined us as a nation? Uh, Just because we went to court? Because uh, of an election? Uh, well, Has it defined us as a nation? Mm. And so I see it as an evolutionary process. I have been very passionate to the point where sometimes you want to hit somebody but maturity sets in. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah, <laughs> easy, we won't easy, go there easy. yet. <laughs> but you find out that if you put yourself in nation building mode, you begin to see a new perspective and you try and see all the revolving pieces that are around you. You don't focus on your one area because what happens in that area is going to affect another area. So you look at it from a holistic point of view. Chain reaction. And so, you know, going forward, we've been, I, I, I'm not bothered one bit that they're in court. We started this fight. The Gun Actors Guild was officially established in 1996. Yeah. I was the first executive welfare officer of the guild under the Fred Amogi presidency. Mm -hmm. So from 1996, we have been at the forefront of fighting for the rights of, of performance and actors. So I've been through the battle. So I know exactly what has happened. But I began to realize that you need to understand the creative space, that you cannot fight it alone. And when we have issues regarding actors, you cannot separate it from deliberating with producers and with other stakeholders. You begin to realize that, yes, I can demand my rights. Who's going to enforce it? If it's going to be enforced, there needs to be a law. So you now have to fight for the law to give you the power. Then you need to have an organization that will represent those interests and find the right leadership that will take you to the promised land. And so we've had to do two things at the same time. Fight for the law and fight for right leadership. And as I always say, we are just a microcosm of the big picture. And you and I know in this nation, fighting for the right leadership has been our bane. Leadership, not just in Ghana, in Africa, has let us down as a continent, as a people. We won't go into the philosoph philosophical issues regarding that. But we are just a microcosm of that picture. And we in the Actors Guild have battled from Fred Amogi's administration, where for the first time we got a constitution. We tried to put in structures that will allow us to grow as a corporate entity. So you would have AGMs, and things like that, decision-making, follow the Constitution. Unfortunately, things didn't unravel well. Then we had 14 years of another presidency outside of the Constitution, <laughs> four years outside of the Constitution. And so you're going to have these issues that come up, and you're going to have a group of people who will say, listen, let's adhere to the right principles. Let's move in a certain direction. And you're going to have forces who say they want to take advantage of the organized chaos that is in the system. So the battle today is about the forces who want uh, progressive forces, who want to see a corporate structure, good governance vis-a-vis -vis making sure that we move towards a certain direction that comes conforms not only to international standards, but our own standards. We don't only need international standards given to us by the Western world. We should also have our own standards. Interesting. And unfortunately, it is a battle between these two forces. And no matter what, 
at the end of the day, truth and good will prevail. However long it takes, whether we go to court for the next 10 years, whether we re-evolve as another entity, whatever you call it, sooner or later, those forces will meet and one will prevail. prevail. And I only hope that if it's in my lifetime, the progressive forces will prevail. Let me bring the panel into the conversation now because this is where Uncle Ken said he was waiting for. Yeah, this is what he was waiting for. So Uncle Ken, over to you, then I'll, we'll come to I'll Jesse. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is where my interest lies, yes. you know, and uh, I like the way Oscar has put it. I, I felt very, um, very sad at affairs of the Actors Guild. And not only the Actors Guild, let's be honest, you know, all the various associations in the industry have one case or the other. And like he said, it is mostly about leadership. And again, Oscar went ahead to prove a point and he made, he made the point that it's about progressive leadership and retarding ones, those who want to stay in the same mold of doing things. And this is where the problems are. And then you get the issue of almost all the associations not following their own constitutions. Which is the bane of... of uh. Exactly. It, it, almost all of them. The issues stem out of not following what is in their own constitutions. And I simply don't understand why these things should happen. So I, uh, I've heard uh, Oscar, you know, I mean, bemoan all the problems of the guild. And I know how determined he is in his lifetime, as he puts it, to see to it that the progressives win. For oh, we've the, won already. For the sake of the industry. In spirit, we've won already. When you I know? say spirit, it's not really just spirit. Though. It's spirit, we have mm -hmm. won already. Right. And uh, I, I want to know what the situation is now okay. with the guild. Because some you were in court and I heard matters were taken out of court. What, what is the situation now? Okay. Now, it's very difficult to discuss these things without discussing them from a certain context. Mm -hmm. um, people tend to say the Ghana Actors Guild is... is is dead or has challenges of course we have challenges if we're in court but I can tell you and then that's why I said that we have to juxtapose it that's why I brought in the issue of our national context mm -hmm. we've been around for 64, 64 years, years yeah. however we've gone to a place where we didn't think we'll get to and even America who has been around for 300 years how many years of democracy I'm not too sure so I won't quote a figure but look at what happened with Trump and look at what's happening now regarding the challenge of what their democratic principles are. Uh -huh. It hasn't defined them as a nation. So that's why I look at it from an evolutionary point of view. But the point I want to make is this. The impasse that we had that began in 2017 mm -hmm. had culminated from a presidency who had been in office for 14, 14 years. years. Who had unconstitutional? That's why I don't mention. You didn't it. want to mention. You yeah, do your yes. research, you know. I know. Um, who changed the constitution, like Guinea, <laughs> by undemocratic methods, governance mm -hmm. methods, without holding an AGM, mm -hmm. have a small group of people hold a meeting mm -hmm. and amend the constitution. Mm -hmm. Of course, the progressives will kick against it. And unfortunately, the progressives decided to walk away. Like some of us, we were tired. And so we let him do whatever he wanted to do. 14 years came, yeah. and a new president was elected. Now the question is, when we had a constitutional crisis, which left the executive without a quorum to operate, mm -hmm. so you have an executive of seven or nine, you needed five within to form a to quorum, form quorum, of which should yeah. be the president, of the course. vice president, and the general secretary. secretary. When you have a quorum where none of that exists, because mm -hmm. the president mm -hmm. has died, mm -hmm. <coughs> the vice president has absconded. Mm -hmm. She's gone abroad. <laughs> you've got none of the other executive members, and you're only left with three mm -hmm. executive members. Mm -hmm. How do they form a quorum? Okay. How do they take decisions on behalf of the guild? Mm -hmm without bringing it to the attention 
of members at Congress to take a decision. And this was the bone of contention. So the progressive forces stepped up and said, listen, we're not going to allow you to hold these elections mm -hmm. unless you follow the Constitution. Constitution. And so that was where the battleground began. Now, out of that was a mediation process, which I must give thanks to Akunudaki <laughs> and uh, to Kwanza. And my good friend George was, George. was yeah. part of that, um, you know, those deliberations, of which an interim transitional executive, executive was put in place for one year to achieve certain goals. Number yeah. one, mm -hmm. they were to come up with a new constitution. Yeah. They were to have a rebrand, new rebranding strategy yep. for the guild. They were to set timelines for the elections. Mm -hmm. All these that they did. And for the first time in over 14 to 17 years, the Ghana Actors Guild held ADMs, mm -hmm. had audits of their accounts. Okay. So you can imagine having an organization for so long mm -hmm. that never, had, never an, had an audit. Never had an audit. The presidents never <laughs> provided any of mm -hmm. So that's why I say you have to understand the context. Mm -hmm. All you hear is people say, we were fighting, we're fighting. Uh. Mm -hmm. But the details of the yeah. fight, people do not understand because we have not come out to inform the public about it. Mm -hmm. And so this executive was, the transitional executive was put in place to do so. Now, the bone of contention was this. When you mention that you are in office for one year, mm -hmm. you assume that it is 365 days. <laughs> so when the mediators met, they put together what they said was, there were three executives in there whose term of office had not expired. They were elected in 2014. Mm -hmm. Now, wisdom presumes that if you terminate their term before their term comes, they can go to court. Mm -hmm. So let us extend by three months to capture the end of their tenure. Mm -hmm. So when we start afresh, we are starting with afresh everything. with no encumbrances ah, in our way. Okay. Okay. Now, those on the regressive side wanted to take advantage because on the day that it was announced to members at AGM, the gentleman who made the, uh, Mr. Akuno Daki, forgive me if I'm mentioning your name. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Did not mention the extension. He said the executive will be in office for one year. Mm. However, he did not go into the detail, mm. which mm. is on paper. Mm. So therefore, based upon that, they have jumped on that to say that the three month extension is illegal but we went to agm to make that extension for three months mm. but they still hang on to the one, the year. one year so it As means at the moment there hasn't been progress there it's, hasn't it, been it's a stalemate of it's a, a stalemate because on the eve of elections we were taken to Court, court again and there was an injunction we'll have to find time to discuss um you know actors guild issues further yeah. because yeah, that's um, why i say it, on a platform like this it is if pretty you deep. really want to yes, follow it, it will take a lot of it time a chronological yes, it, yes. so everybody will get a proper understanding understand. so finally let me bring jesse into the conversation uh, but it's all about good governance jesse likes yeah jesse is pretty interested in the governance bit especially where you started from <laughs> jesse oscar is here i mean so we well, haven't had your thoughts so far. If you have any questions or yes, any contributions so maybe, to everything me, that has been said so on far. The, on, the, yeah. on the lighter side. Yeah. Um, I think that... We have too much lighter side. <laughs> <laughs> too much. So, so my... you can go heavy if you want to. <laughs> no. no, I'll get to heavy. All right. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll get there. So um, I'll stay on the lighter side. Um, and my lighter side is that we've seen what's happening in the movie and the series space. Yeah. Today, as it stands, uh, there's a lot of value... <clears throat> There's a lot of value within series creation. Uh, if you pan Netflix a little bit, you obviously would see the impact of policing stories mm -hmm. or security-based stories. Yeah. So the, the big question would, for me would be, what did we miss and how did we miss it? Um, I hear him. Listen, for, forgive me. I'm losing my voice a little. Yeah, uh, that's all right. Sorry. Could you Sorry about that. Give me what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Philip, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, for, for me, the, the big question would be, how did we miss that train? 
that seems to have taken off in a very positive way. Nigeria may have caught, caught on very well, yep. South Africa. Um, so what, what did we miss? miss. And I, I didn't get that very clearly in his submission. What I heard him say was that there were two pivotal points in our growth. The first one was Amistad. And then the second one was on the, the second mo movie where I think there was supposed to be a lot of maybe technological handovers. But beyond that, how did we supposedly miss that particular train? Okay. The second point for me is that I think that within the movie and the series space, movies relating to policing are a very important way of shaping cultural nuances. Very. So if you watch a typical American movie and you see the technology you are afraid to do, you watch CSI yeah. Miami, and you're wondering whether to, to slap Sadiq or not. Or you're afraid or, because you know they'll you're catch afraid you. afraid because they you feel like maybe you, some... Yeah. You know, they have a way of telling a story. Yeah. And anybody who watched um, Inspector Bediakon, well, yeah. you would see how the police supposedly uh, finds criminals, the police yeah. driving on the roads, and find they would find you. Yeah. So for me, w w wasn't it possible? Was it a funding issue that they had to stop? Did they get support from the Ghana Police Service? Was national security interested in the program? So wh 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 why did the program come to an end? Because, uh, look, CSI Miami is still running. Yeah. And that, that same period was a period in which we were watching Bold and Beautiful. All these lazy series came up that we we're, were watching from Mexico and everything else. But we were also watching Old Fox. Sorry? We were also watching The Old Fox and Derek. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah. So for, for, for me, the, the, the big thing is, why did it come to an end? Does he know why it came to an end? Um, the, the last one for me, um, George, was even uh, the, the modern day series. One of my favorite being uh, Alias, where they were looking for supposedly the Ramboldi manuscript. Yeah. And so the question for him would be, was the hook missing from the, the writer's perspective? Or suddenly we didn't seem to have good stories so far as criminality was concerned. Was concerned. So what, what what was it? And then before we'll get to what, what he is calling the heavier bit. Yeah. So maybe before he comes in, let me just slap it on that. Okay. I, I'm I'm tired more, of more No, you see, I am tired of structuralists, right? Yeah. Uh. So I, I, I feel that anybody who is an ardent structuralist focuses more on the structure than the function of things. Uh -huh. So and I understand what he's saying, but in, in truth the, the role of the government is not to feed everybody. It's to create an enabling environment for me to function. Yeah, absolutely. But when we've sat here with uh, Musica, it's more structural than function. Mm -hmm. Gamro, structure than function. So for me, the big question would be that, what do we expect from the Actors Guild necessarily? What, what's, if, if it was fully functioning effectively, what are the top three things that we expect from them to the extent that those within the industry are not firing progressively because of its its inefficiencies? What what what, what do I need a structure for? For when 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 if you, what you're looking for is funding, is script, is production, why the hell do I need it? And why should that be the reason why I am boxed down? Finally, we we live in a country where, as an example, my biggest example would be that the former GFA president, as an example, was more popular than Ghana's best striker. Because mm -hmm. every day we talk about him on radio, he has more equity and talk time than our best players. So, and, and the same thing, if, if I go on Nigeria movies and I'm looking, I don't even know the name of the uh, Actors Guild president or whatever, because they're talking about their actors and celebrating them all, all along. Well, why, why do I need a structure? Well, what's the essence of it? Point made. Very, very solid point. And Oscar, before you start to respond to Jesse, let us say goodbye to our viewers on Joy Prime Television. Thank you for being a part of our show. show continues right here on Joy 99.7 FM and um, also online at myjoyonline.com. And we're also on Facebook. Go to um, facebook.com slash joy99.7 hashtag showbiz A to Z. Show produced by the man Philip Nye and Anita. Yes, and um, we're still right here. So you can just switch and join us. And of course, we'll meet you again next week. Thank you for being a part of the show on Joy Prime. Of course, proudly brought to you by Ghana's most reliable mobile telecommunications company. That's MTN everywhere you go and high five, choke mode, and powered by Joy Entertainment. We are here like that. And the show continues right here. So, um, Oscar. Well, that's, that's a pretty tall list of light, light stuff. <laughs> um, where do I start from? <laughs> Okay, first and foremost, yes, in my submission, yeah. I ended at GFIC. Mm -hmm. But 
GFIC, you know, is just part of the <laughs> equation. Yeah. Um, there's a temptation to say that where we are means that the film industry has been always here. True. Which is not a truth. Yeah. The film industry has had its moments. It has had its peaks. But there are trends. There's been a trend analysis. There was a time when Kwan Sa was making his movies. Mm. There were lines that were going from GFIC all the way to Flagstaff House. Mm -hmm. Two cues. Mm. Then came the video <clears throat> from the celluloid to the video area. And we saw Baby Thief and we saw all those films. And there were lines. Baby Thief. Yeah. There were lines. Yeah. yeah. There were lines. Yeah. yeah. Ghanaians were patronizing Ghanaian film. True. Mm. It happened for about five or so years or more. And then the qualities began to drop. Business began to fail. And that producers who were producing those films decided to bring in Nigerian films. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? I do remember. And so for a period of time, for about another five years, it was purely Nigerian films that, that were dominated governing the market. The market. That killed the local industry. So I'm saying today, the producers themselves killed the Ghanaian film industry by bringing in the Nigerian, the Nigerian productions. Now, trying to find a way out to also take advantage of the Nigerian market, we came into the glamour film era. And we saw the rise of Majid and Jacqueline and Jackie Appiah yeah. and co. Mm -hmm. That also was another, you know, peak area for Ghanaian film. And it lasted for, I don't know how many years. So there was a certain trend. And then the producers went to give an ultimatum to the Nigerian film industry. And if Socrates Safwa is here, he was there at the time as the secretary of FIPAC. Mm. You are aware. Mm -hmm. And give them ultimatums. Mm. When they come to Ghana, you have to deposit 3,000 Ghana, yeah. $3,000, so that in case that you take a hotel or you don't pay any artists, mm -hmm. you know. So they, did, they made certain moves that got retaliation from the Nigerians who also stopped coming here. To do the Nigerian mm -hmm. co-production, so that was what was happening. That was what and Nigerian was. producer would come in, and you'd have to deposit some money in exactly. case. Why had there been a precedent where Nigerian producer had come in and refused well, to pay people? At that time, or? the film producers felt that they were the ogas of the industry, and so, nothing could happen in the film industry without them. Or, they still, or, or maybe was it was it intended to create a seeming bottleneck for them? To stop them from coming so or to limit the influx yes. yeah it may have yeah. good intent yeah. yes it yeah. may have good yeah. intent yeah i was not part and i don't know who either I, and i don't need to be part yeah. of that discussion mm. um but obviously there was a backlash yeah. and maybe there should have been wider consultation and thought behind it mm. than than that yeah. went into it so the nigerians they, returned the favor they, they returned the favor yeah. and they banned you know it's very difficult for Ghanaian uh, actors, actors to even get to... roles in nigeria wow you see, the, the, the issue at that time mm. was about the rate at which the Nigerian movie industry was gaining ground. Mm. Dominating the industry. In this country. Yes. I was at the time at the... Uh, classification. Classification mm -hmm. board. And so we had meetings with the film the Fire Park folks. Mm -hmm. And what they suggested then was that they didn't want us classifying Nigerian movies to be sold here. Interesting. In Ghana. Yeah. But, I mean, there was no law that could deprive a, an ordinary producer from bringing a film yeah. to be classified. So yeah. the agreement was that every week, about eight Ghanaian movies would, would be classified. classified and put out for sale, yeah. and only two foreign ones, Nigerian ones, okay. would be. That is how they wanted to I mean, to, to give the locals a head start. Yes, yeah. to give the locals so a head So good start. intent. There was absolutely no doubt about that. The intent was, as far as I'm concerned, noble. Mm. I mean, it was mm. to protect our Ghanaian industry. I, I don't take anything away from them. But there was a backlash right. for whatever reason. Right. And we saw the dwindling of the industry. And that is how Kuma Wood rose mm -hmm. to fill mm. the vacuum. Right. Mm. And then Kuma Wood had its time. And Kuma Wood was not producing... Uh, internationally standard, quality, quality standard productions. Let's face facts. They blew it. it. But they filled in the space. They were entertainers. It was, they, it was yeah, good yeah. for the time. Yeah. And yeah. if they were doing business, they kept the industry alive. They, no matter what the qualities were and whatever mm. we, we, talked, we talked negatively about it, they did a good job. Yes. In creating the jobs and creating, you know, yes. the, the, the entertaining content, content for, mm -hmm. for that time. Mm -hmm. 
unfortunately, just like every industry and everything that happens in Ghana when you get popular, you begin to reduce quality. Mm -hmm. The law of diminishing uh, the returns. The was not there in the first place. The law of diminishing returns, <laughs> coupled with the intervention of, of the technology. Yeah. Mm. And the technological gap that you are talking about mm -hmm. is when the CDs began to phase out. Mm. Why? Because my good friends from Joy FM and from all over introduced what? DVDs. The, the uh, multi box. Multi box. The boxes. Uh, oh, which, okay. Which now gave way for, so instead of DSTV now, a larger population could get a hold Access. of more content. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as the quality fell, this came in, and the digital space also came and added its woes onto the industry. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of picking up from there, and at that time, if you remember, it was computers, laptops, and so forth that mm -hmm. came into play. Mm -hmm. Instead of us to move, I would say, from CD mm -hmm. to pen drive, mm -hmm. which would have been more accessible as, as far as I'm to pen fill in the gap. It was completely ignored. It was completely ignored, and we were behaving like dinosaurs, yeah. still yeah. waiting, yeah. still using CDs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we didn't latch onto the digital mm -hmm. era and look into the future of what it would be like. Now we've caught into the, sorry, we've caught That's into right. this space. It's come about, the industry went down, and unfortunately, COVID has re reared its ugly head, has caused as much damage as the 79 coup did <laughs> for, for the creative space. Exactly. And we are now grappling with how do we survive as creatives? How do we monetize our, are we going to stay and become dinosaurs? We've but, seen but the dinosaurs. Haven't, but haven't the creatives cool. reacted nicely? Because the last time we spoke to Ivan, mm -hmm. that's how come they in introduced stuff like the farmhouse movies up. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shelly has uh, the studios up. Um, yeah. um, um, Sparrow Studios Sparrow. up. Uh, or Sadiq. Sparrow Station. Yeah, Sparrow yeah, Station Sparrow up Station. and all those other ones. I agree ones. with you. So, yeah. So they, and they've been they, monetized. They are monetized, right? It's yeah. called yeah. The, yeah. The, the what? The... The, the, sparrow the Sparrow Station, sparrow station. and then the there's Farmhouse House movies. The wheat up. will be yeah. separated yeah. From, from the, the chaff. I'm not going to say chaff. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying here is that there's space for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There were B-rated movies in America. Mm -hmm. President Ronald Reagan was a B-rated actor mm -hmm. before he became in president. His time, yeah. So there, there is space for everybody. There's a market for everybody. So if today Netflix is there and you want to still produce Kumawood standard mm -hmm. and think it will get onto next flick at the end of the day you're an investor yeah you look at your investment you are making and you look at what standards and qualities you need to take advantage of that investment you have made and what platforms you will make to get your returns i'm not getting it's where a, you're going so the point you're making is that though the creatives have responded and created some of these apps and stuff. Mm. There's a question of quality to be able to get them on and even cross the local barriers and go international. What I think our challenge here is how do we create another local economy of film, mm, yeah. which we had before? Yeah. Because now it's gone digital. It's, it's gone out of Ghana's airspace. Mm -hmm. All right? I mean, we okay. don't have the cinema halls. You know, we don't have the exhibition halls. We don't have that economy. We, how do we restart a vibrant film, local film industry? But if I am listening so, to you, no, can, I, I, can, I, I, can I answer that? Can you? Okay. No, I, I, my, my simple answer would yeah. be, you start from the person consuming the, the movies. movies. What is the average Ghanaian interested in today? Thank you. What is he exposed to today? Sadiq oh. would always tell us that on a digital space, Everybody is there. Everybody is there. So the, the, the entire narrative of Ghana movie has to be defined from the perspective of the consumer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's why sometimes I fight with Uncle Ken when he says, oh, music it must have rhythm and konka and kaka and whatever. And I'll say, but Uncle But it Ken, is true. <laughs> the <laughs> consumer <laughs> today has <laughs> changed. If it has bis, 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 Oh, Uncle Ken. Did he come today? He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 this is yeah, the, the Do we have time for the music conversation? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's Sadiq, why we are wrapping up on this, this one. I'm coming, this I'm coming to Sadiq. I'm coming to Sadiq quickly. Uh, no, no, Oscar, hold on. You know, before I come to Very Sadiq, good. before I come to Sadiq, let me quickly go. You know, the interesting thing about being on radio and mentioning people's names. Sometimes you think they are not listening.
listening. <laughs> but this show, everyone is listening. Yeah. So Kritafu has called and he would like to react. So let me go to the phone lines and speak to Mr. Sukritafu. Oh, no, you will tell us what he's reacting to. Uh, uh, no, he's reacting to... You remember when Oscar was making the point, he did mention about the, the Nigerian, the, the influx of ah, the Nigerian yeah, 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 movie. Yeah, yeah, Sukrit okay. was part of the people so that the PR put certain pegs. Yeah. Okay. Five pack. You can clarify. Mr. Safu. Yes, sir. Oh, good evening, sir. How are you doing, sir? By God's grace, I'm still alive. Uh, good to know you tuned in to Joy 99.7 and to Showbiz A to Z. And um, you indicated that you wanted to clarify something. So please, you have the, uh, the listeners are listening. Okay, just a quick one. Um, you know, a radio is uh, for record keeping. So whatever you see on radio can be picked and put out there as uh, for, for record. So let me yeah. play this. Please go ahead. Yes, we placed um, something like a, a security... Uh, fund for the Nigeria, I'll call it fund anyway, for uh, clarification purpose, let me say a fund, that if you are a Nigerian and you want to come and shoot in Ghana, and I'm using Nigerian because they were those coming, but if you are a foreigner you want to come and shoot in Ghana, we decided to place a $10,000 fund that you have to put it down. Why did we do that? For some time, we started getting complaints from hoteliers, especially, especially that you have Nigerians who will come and book their hotels. Say they are coming to shoot for, let's say, 12 days. They will go out on the 10th day and will not come back, and they won't pay. We got about five calls, and it was coming. And we also have artists who were also complaining that they have Nigerian producers who have come, they've worked with them, they don't pay them. We also have food vendors. People were just coming to our office. That is Five Park office. When it's about film, they will come to Five Park office. So the best thing to do is to make sure that the person will put this money down. We are not charging them. We put the, you put this money down. When you finish the production and you pay everybody, take your money. If you need part of the money to also go and pay the de- these debts, you come and take it and pay to make sure that everybody is paid. That is why we did that. Because when they leave Ghana, when they book the hotel for, let's say, 12 days, and on the 10th day, they leave, what happens? You can't trace them. And we also followed up to know that most of these guys who are coming here to shoot are not actually the main producers in Nigeria. These are some of their PAs and some of their uh, production guys who managed to come to Ghana, carry themselves as producers. Who drink all these guys in Ghana as their Nigerian producers? They don't have the money. They do these things on credit, even credit, uh, uh, hire artists on credit. By the time you realize they finish, they pack their bags and they are gone. That is how come we brought in that $10,000 thing that look, put it as a security or some surety that if we have this money, you finish and you need some to even pay some of the debts, we give it to you. When you finish, we give everything to you. If you've paid everybody, it is back to you. Or if you need the $10,000 to pay everything, we give it back to you. We don't keep any of this um, uh, any amount. Okay, but sir. it is to make sure that you pay your debts. All right. Um, I don't quite agree with the concept, but because of time, we'll leave it and see if next okay. week we can find time to agree, okay. agree uh, 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 to discuss it you further. Were yes. And people were coming and crying on you. Oh, okay. no, don't worry. When we come into the studio next week, we'll find... This, okay. I'll, I'll specially ask... Oh, next week we are not here. The week after, I'll ask permission from Philip so that we can sit to discuss this further. Okay? okay. All right, boss. Okay. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. There's a good uh, discussion going on, and uh, Oscar is giving a good account of uh, the chronology of the challenges we have in the, in the industry. Thank you, sir. Yeah. God bless. Okay. Thank you. Continue listening. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, that was so great, Safo. Um, Sadiq, let me come to you. We are running out of time. We have just about five minutes left with um, Oscar. So, um, For me, I mean, it's... Uh... It's quite sad that in industry, almost all the organizations that are supposed to be at the forefront of advocating, advocating for industry are in problem, are having problems. But I would need us to deliberate very well on the line that Jesse went to, you know, which is that with the issues have been overly discussed. There's a certain fixation on, like you said, Structures of let's say five park, um, um, it was Gumbrow, it actors girl, music, girl, music, Gumbrow, yeah. and all of those things. And he asked a very important question, which is that yes, they are in problems, but is it the case that 
the advocacy they are, or the things they are supposed to do, which they aren't doing, or I mean, it, it, it's not something that even on the outside, Oscar Provincial can do, for instance, because even within the problems, mm -hmm. there's been certain advancement. Mm -hmm. Act 935 had come <clears throat> regarding, regardless of all the problems they've had. After 30 years. Yes, but it's come. It's come. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's supposed to be progress. Beyond the Act 935 as well, the Creative Industry Bill had been passed. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be executed. And so, like Jesse is saying, there's been some shifts for better. But those acts what? that you claim have been passed, <clears throat> how are they being used effectively yes. to help the yes. industry? So, They've and, just been passed. Exactly. Yeah, and they are sitting and, there. And, but but so that's my point on the functions, not the structure. I know, I know that the problem, I know that the issues is that, I know that the... I, been passed. I know the natural... You know. Uh, yes, uh, I know. Uh, uh, let them learn. Let one voice. Yeah, naturally, please learn, yeah. Naturally, okay. the idea is that for you to move forward, you've got to consistently look back. Yeah. But we've been consistently and almost always been looking back for so many years. Yes. When there have been when the shifts are happening, but we need to move on. We need to move forward. How do we take advantage of some of these shifts to really move forward <clears throat> and then ensure that because at a certain level, some of this technological advancement will whip industry into line. Today, if your issue was that um somebody picks up like let's say in the movie you know movie and music goes hand in hand yeah if you picked somebody's music then and you added it to your movie without licensing or getting the uh, adequate uh, approvals for it and it was a problem of industry technology today will keep you into line if you do it you've got to clear it if you don't clear it either on youtube or netflix they'll flag it so we are getting to that point. How do we really take a look at this and all these things that have come? Whilst we are supposed to help and help the state to ensure that the creative industry bill is executed to its perfection, mm -hmm. yeah. Act 935, the fund and all of those mm -hmm. things, we still are going back and looking at the issues and consistently looking at the issues. Yeah, I think the point is made. How do we really, how do a critical mass of industry people that are the progressives really look into the future mm -hmm. and move forward? Because everybody wants to be a leader. In the structure. In no, the that's structure. the point. Anke, 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 that yes, is the structuralist. And the things they are supposed, to do, the the things they are supposed to do now. The things they are supposed to do now. The things they are supposed to do now. Okay. If, Those if things I are even happening. So I think you made a point. Let's let them respond because we we are out of time. Yeah. When I started, I said going to court at sixty four did not define the nation. True. Now going to court in the industry has not defined us. No, it hasn't. We have seen positives. And you must understand the context of the positives. It has taken us 30 years as a film industry, 30, mm -hmm. to get the Film Act. 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't take it for granted. Yes, there yes. are people who started the struggle yes, yeah. who have yeah. died yeah. 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 and have not seen yeah. its glory today. Yeah, exactly. So a certain foundation has been led. Actors Guild, in my own space, we did not have royalties or residuals. Mm or even an option for uh, pension. So when ASOG has been set up mm -hmm. as an organization mm -hmm. for performers mm -hmm. to be able to get royalties for their works, if the right systems as in Gamro were in place for being able to log and track those so that artists will be able to get their due properly, then we'll, we would have resolved a lot of issues. So structurally, there have been certain structures that have been put in place and the law and the foundation has been laid. Unfortunately, it has been swelled up because of all this negativity in court. But really, remove the court issues and we have set a platform for a new takeoff. When I look at Actors Guild today, Actors Guild, we have been berated all over the place. But it is Actors Guild in the last phase of this advocacy that went and got funding, brought all the coalition together to advocate for Act 935. That is one of the greatest achievements I think Actors Guild has been, has able, been to able to do. To, to. Secondly, we uncovered rot at ASOG. And because of that, now performers are able to get some royalties as Gamera is having but the structures need to be put in place. Oh, uh, so uh, all uh, the good uh, governance uh, issues about, and the things so, so will benefit issues. the members. You mentioned royal. I received royalties about two weeks ago from ASOC. I think it was about three, 300 or Can so. Can you imagine <laughs> the number of 
you know, and we are yeah. laughing. I'm at 300 or 350. Oh, no, that's not bad. I didn't expect it's it. It's about, yeah. are we on the right path? Yeah. How to get equality is another matter altogether. And we are tied up with right. Gamro in being able to get that done. Mm -hmm. But the foundation has been put in place. What we need is the leadership to drive to it. Drive it. Right. Oscar, thank you very much. The problem we have in this country is we lack the quality of leadership, leadership. Yeah. and so if sadiq Everybody and all knows. of us are here we must begin to identify a new breed of leadership which is selfless which understands the dynamics of advocacy because it's not mm -hmm. everybody who can do advocacy yep. and who can meet with the duty bearers yep we must find the cream and maybe as an industry unite hopefully which i don't think will happen as one body using the mass that we have together because actors we redefined our, in our constitution that it is not about just actors. The international definition goes to DJ, all performers. Radio, DJ, Everybody who's a performer. Oh, yeah. This man News led the rebranding. Every, yeah, I did. I did. Bring yeah, I did the rebranding. It's the yeah. Everybody. I mean, in. image room. And right. when you go to America, <laughs> Screen Actors Guild and AFTRA, the American Federation of Television and Radio, were two separate mm. entities. Yeah. They have now joined They've together. Merged. They have yeah. merged. Mm -hmm. They have 160,000 members. Each member pays $3,000 to enter, minus your dues. Mm. Please, 160,000 times 3,000, so so $480 million. Dollars. Yeah. Who's so for Why will you not be able to find, be able to deliver pension or, you know, uh, benefits for your members with that kind of resource? But if you don't have selfless leaders, they will only mm, look at the money there. and see how they can chop it. Oscar Provencal is Which the name. Been been. Oscar Provencal is the name. Wow. Man. Thank you so very much for making time, um, you know, to come to our studios today. It's been a very, very insightful and elevating conversation, enlightening conversation. I mean, um, and uh, we should the engage more. Has been yeah, I can see that. You've been punching the microphone left, right, but it's all good. But we need to engage more. I mean, yes, uh, look, they are very interesting fine brains in the studio sadiq here jesse uncle ken and you know we all have a lot of love for the actors guild and the performers in general i mean uh when i was called upon to join the team to do the rebranding we i mean it wasn't about money i mean nobody but pay for anything but we knew Absolutely. we're doing it to help grow our industry and we're always available Can I to tell help them how progressive we've come Oh, we don't have the we time, unfortunately. Left the space we don't have the time. Yeah. For gender equality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we made sure that our vice president role is meant only for a woman. For, for a woman, exactly. George, That's George, how George, far. George, thank we you very much. Uh, go before he yes. goes, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. I don't think there are serious, unsurmountable issues within the organizations. Just follow the tenets of the constitution. constitution. Good That's it. Do That's as it. It says. it says exactly. And there will be no problems. There will be no thank problems. You. Uncle Ken, thank you very much. Oscar, thank you so, 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 thank so you, very brother. much. I'm honored. For all. Yes, and that is the man, Oscar Provencal. You know him from Inspector Bidi. Very, very exciting conversation we've just had in the studio. Um, there was a question I wanted to ask about um, pensions and veterans, but I think he's already responded to it. You heard him. You heard the man. It's already been responded to, the, so there's no need asking at all. When we come back from this last break, a conversation on music albums. Stay on. If home is where the heart is, then let's go home, shall we? Let's go where the entertainment is. Where the passion is. The <laughs> Where the love ties. <laughs> and sometimes, even the tears too. <laughs> Let's go where we feel safe enough to share our opinions. And send sweets. Where we do that embarrassing little dance to our favorite song. <laughs> Let's go home where the love, the care, and the joy live. <laughs> There's no place like home. Connect your home to super fast internet with affordable data bundles from MTN Home. Visit broadband.mtn.com.gh or your My MTN app to sign up today. Everywhere you go.
Classical music made by Bach express God's love. Classical music made by Beethoven express God's power. Classical music made by Mozart express God's laughter. Please join Jeffrey every Thursday and Sunday, 12 a.m. to 1.30 a.m. to enjoy the very best of classical music by legendary composers here on Joy 99.7 FM. Fellow final year students, I have good news for you. Joy Learning, your numero uno educational TV channel, is back on your screens with your award-winning revision show. Oh yeah, and with a bang and a difference. Get ready for a great teaching and learning experience with your favorite TV teachers as they take you through a totally different TV revision session as you prepare for your mock and final exam. Product of two minus the total product of level one hydrogen atom that has lost an electron. U is equal to 27 minus A. Uh, the answer is volcanology. Volcanology, one time. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Every summary question has a specific requirement. Listen carefully. The insurance prepaid are all shown under the current asset beauty. You have the opportunity to send questions before your favorite revision show is aired through video, text, or voice messaging on all our social media platforms. On Facebook and Twitter, it's Joy Learning TV. On Instagram, it's Joy underscore Learning TV. And the TV teachers will be right there with the answers. You can watch the revision show by tuning in to Joy Learning on your multi-TV digital box every Monday to Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Feel free to ask mind-boggling questions on any subject thought on Joy Learning, either via phone calls, Zoom or WhatsApp video calls, or text us live on TV. Revision Show, your TV teacher everywhere. The revision show for SHS final year students shows Mondays to Fridays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Join learning. Keep learning. Are you ready? ready? Be one of the three contestants vying to chip away part of the massive 250,000 Ghana City prize money. Prize from money. The Yes, indeed, it's showbiz A to Z. Check with your time. It's 27 after 5. You're locked on to Joy 99.7 FM. And just imagine listening to good music from your favorite artists. The MTN Color bring back to on catalogs over 16,000 songs ranging from top songs in all the genres. They've got hip life, high life, gospel, reggae, R&B, hip hop, pop with over 2,000 plus different artists from Ghana and beyond. It's only MTN that can make it possible, you know. So if you won't say, can promises slow down? Just dial star 1355, um, star 226 hash. Kwame Eugene's dollar on the US on star 1355, star 142 hash. Joe Metals or one Wenny is on star 1355, star 140 hash. Famia's praise is on star 1355, star 155 hash. And Mr. Drew's mood is on star 1355, star 26 hash. Enjoy soothing music while you wait to be connected to that all-important call. Just dial star 1355. Hash and follow the menu for details. Press the star 1 button anytime to enable you copy that song and stay connected. Only on MTN. Everywhere you go. Now the world of business changes rapidly but you can stay ahead of the curve. Receive all the breaking business news and stories behind the numbers straight to your MTN or Airtel to device daily or monthly. Simply go to myjoinline.com and click on the blue notification bell and subscribe now. Get all the facts and figures and stories from the world of business wherever you are direct to your mobile device. Real news delivered to you. Course charges would always apply. Now this October... Joy Entertainment is going to be celebrating a phenomenal music group. Get set to party with the Tego Sisters. Celebrating Tego Sisters on Friday, October 1st. On all platforms, Joy, Joy Prime, Hits FM, I Joy Online, and all other, all the Joy Entertainment social media pages. Call in on a radio or TV shows on Friday, October 1st. Request your favorite Tego Sisters song or share a memory. 
join us online for an awesome experience celebrate no musicians celebrate our music celebrating the tago sisters celebrate music for us by us kindly follow joy entertainment on all social media platforms at joy entertainment for more info joy entertainment we are large and in charge and i've already mentioned that next saturday we're going to be at the junction mall for the 12th edition of the echo bank joy news habitat fair powered by the plant city extension project from cities and habitats please be there be there be there if you have any inquiries just dial 0546908179 or 0540110389 probably pop down in partnership with echo bank the pan african bank and powered by the plant city extension project by cities and habitats rent to own and sponsored by elegant homes and general construction where quality meets value Duraplast, where Duraplast goes, water flows. DBS Industries Limited, we truly are your roof pack experts. And Renters Paradise, we help people and properties find each other. Echo Bank join us Habitat Fair, everything housing. And playing in the background, of course, you know it already, is one of Ghana's biggest, biggest, biggest songs released on one of the biggest albums ever. Taking us straight into our next conversation. We're coming back into the studios. Um, I've got Uncle Kennedy, Mr. Jesse Amu Ejepong, and Sadiq Abdullahi Abu. Gentlemen, good evening. good evening. Sadiq, I'll start with you. You are the one who's uh, managing Boomplay. <laughs> yeah? And I remember we had a conversation um, um, regarding one of um, Ghana's finest artists, and were, uh, your people were talking about albums. Yeah. Is that what you guys take? You just take albums? You don't take singles? No, we take singles. In fact, I mean, it's become the music economy has become more a singles market now. But albums are also <coughs> because it, the albums also do well. Mm. Um, the albums ensure that people spend more time on the apps. Okay. Uh, which is I mean, a core part of what you do, which is trying to get people to spend more time on the apps because beyond they spending time and spending money to um, to to listen to to stream um, there's also another revenue model which is advertising so the more they spend on it and the more you have data to show you can end some advertising budget you know so albums are also desired albums are also desired and I mean in recent times some albums have gone on to have some very 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 good um, streams but you said it's become a singles economy what do you think accounts for that is it that people are not appreciating albums, so the musicians feel it's a waste of um, the, investment? The the coach, the test makers call it uh, microwave uh, generation, microwave <laughs> uh, situation, where we are in an era where the biggest users of the music today, um, it's part of their trade to jump on the hottest trend, hottest song, listen to it after a while, and then move on. You know, unlike before, where for Uncle Uncle Ken Dems, they had a, and this week I was having the same discussion <laughs> with somebody. No, they had a certain connection to it because they yeah, went the extra mile to acquire the CD. I don't giving Jesse fodder. You mean no no no, no, no but it's a good thing uh, uh, Sadiq, Sadiq, you mean Commander Hill, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, but guy, you know, I swear. No, in fact, a lot of the you see, you're giving him for that. <laughs> you you but again, it's a good thing because, oh, yes. in fact, today a lot of the record. It's good league. Uh, <laughs> no, because the, 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 a lot of the record labels today would have desired to have a point where, because that was the era where the 360 deals came about, right. mm. where people went beyond buying the records mm-hmm. to buying uh, match. And buying things that they would, because they wanted to have a piece of the music and the talent with them and it, it was a after a while it was something for them to look back and cherish so that's why you would talk about fujis today yeah and that nostalgia and this week somebody was talking to Charlie the fujis come we're going back and forth on that era mm-hmm. how the songs resonated the rap we're singing it and all of those and there was that emotive connection yes that emotive connection hasn't gone but today 
they like their singles. Drop yeah. the singles, they listen to it, they move on. What's the other single? And yeah. we've gone into more into the playlist era where there's expert curation of some of the songs carefully curated for a particular audience and you can sit back, enjoy it and, and chill. You know, and so that has partly one of the way things that have actually encouraged that singles thing. So you can have an artist go seven years without dropping an album. Yeah, interesting. George, you're talking about singles. Yeah. yeah. You see, singles have always been in existence. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, growing up mm. in Ghana, the late 60s, early 70s, yeah. we were selling 45s of all the pop popular songs they were on for, what we call the 45s yeah very small what is that 45 rpm that's the speed with which you could play on a turntable table was a 45 which was a very small that, that vinyl. Was, the, the, the rhythm per know. minute <laughs> yeah i don't know suffer check <laughs> <laughs> a small vinyl of 45s which were all hit singles from the various artists you know but the albums are the small ones like this it's no it's no it was transfer. it was like this like 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 uh, uh, as a CD, okay. Ah. But was vinyl. Yeah. Okay. The size of a CD yeah. by vinyl. What was it played on? It was played on gramophones oh. and turntables. Uh -huh. Oh, my father has some gramophone. Right. I it was played on work. gramophones and turntables. That was the forty-five RPM and the thirty-three mm, RPM, RPM, which was the album. The thirty-three yeah. was the album at the time. Now, when with the advent of uh, most of the record companies. Yeah they rather believed in the albums. Yeah. And then what they do is they release an album and then see how the sales go. Then they pick a single yeah. off the album and release that also as a single. You know, for those who just... The same thing or from an album. Sale. You okay. pick a single from an album like Michael Jackson. Okay, mm -hmm. Michael Jackson comes up with Off The Wall. Yeah. There are so many hits on the album, but you pick, say, Off The Wall. Yeah. As a single. Yeah. And you blast it on the mm. airwaves. No, for, was it used as a marketing yes, ploy? Yes, as a marketing ploy. For uh -huh, those but who, it was not released separately for consumption. It was released for consumption. No, I mean where you could buy... You could buy the single. Just a single. Okay. Yes, you could buy the single. Okay. And then came the 12 inches, you know, in the disco era. They would just release... A group will come with just one song. The flip side is the song. The B side is That's an right. instrumental That's version right. yeah. of the song. That was just for the discotheque era. Yeah. you know and that sold as well i mean djs and those people bought the 12 inches for their jobs and that kind of thing so singles have always been there yeah. but the, the albums was what to cherish was what people cherished because you go into a record shop and it's full of albums so you go looking for the albums to buy you know and our producer asked us to pick five yes so please albums. go ahead and let us know what your top five albums were top five yes Alice albums over and the he, last three decades yeah but Alice you see you see with me he, he <laughs> go back, go back. oh shush no, we have to divide it into <laughs> we have to divide it into three we, decades we, we should go for that so no 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 let's give a good kid we'll give a good kid uh, uh, give me 70s one. you give me one Nine, don't 50, give me we'll give you 50s please 50s, leave 50s, me i'm running out of time i go get let's hear your your, 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 your selection don't, don't, don't mind them i can't take one don't mind them we will be cool don't mind them organic analog albums you see with me for this particular show yeah. That it was very difficult to pick five albums. Yeah. And he he said to me, Uncle Ken, I'm not talking foreign, no. I'm talking Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Oh, local. Eh? Yes, yeah, local. that's what ah, the producer oh, local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emphasis on local. Yeah, he local. sort of incapacitated me <laughs> not to be able to move outside the realm of oh, the country. Oh, oh, but I agreed. Oh, oh. Yes. So my five albums. <laughs> Yes. One of the first ones I chose was an album by Osibisa. Okay. It was one of the last albums Osibisa, Osibisa did, did as a complete group, and particularly with uh, Teddy and uh, Mark Tonto yes. as brothers. And and it was called Oseye. Okay. The album was called Oseye. It is not a very pop. It was released in 2009. So, you see, I'm not going that far back. Yeah, yes. Is that the one? Uh, 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 okay, okay. That's, uh, I'm trying know, to recall the, song, if, uh, the songs on... Uh, I play a particular. I play a couple of songs of it on uh, African, <coughs> African songs. African songs, okay. One of All the right. tracks is Watusi. Watusi, yeah, I think I know Watusi. I think yeah. you've heard Watusi. Yeah. And then the yeah. other is a version of uh, uh, the Beatles guys, uh, <coughs> My My Sweet Lord. Yeah. It's on that particular album, but it's not a very popular album. Then, the best of Bessa Simons mm -hmm. is a compilation. You know, the best of Bessa Simons is a compilation of Bessa's tracks. 
and it has wonderful tracks. Billing Day, yeah. Awoi, yeah. uh, CC Nana, uh, yes. and all those things. Brilliantly produced album. And then Captain Yaba. Uh-huh. Captain Yaba hailed uh, from... Uh, can I show you this one doesn't go beyond 30 years? No! Okay. These are all... Uh, look. If it's not on Google, it's more than 50 years. <laughs> that's right. Captain that's Yaba right. is not on Google. <laughs> Who said so? <laughs> No, no, no. Have you tried it? No, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll didn't go on YouTube. No, 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 no. Let me see Captain Yaba. Go we'll check. Captain go on YouTube. You see? Yaba, Y A B A. Oh, it's there. Oh, why? 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 I mean, he's so ignorant. <laughs> it's not a problem. It comes to it's not a problem. It's not a problem. He wants to. Make it sounded, fun of it me. sounded like an album from Shaka Zulu. <laughs> yeah, or, it can be. Or some King Kong it, it can be. <laughs> oh, no, George, play it. Let me see. It looks like something that would be good, though. It's solid. I mean, I'm looking at. He had an Afrobeat. Was it an Afrobeat album? I'm saying it. You, you guys, you oh. have no clue. This is the problem I have with this show. Oh. When I, I, we talk oh. music like They don't this. know. Don't mind them. I so, can. When yes. we talk, when we're discussing mm. music like this, oh. we need to hear the sound. Yes. Okay. To so, be um, able to make the so, points. So, Uncle Ken, hold on. Don't worry. Don't go too far. I've got um, what you say for you from Osibi, sir. No, no, no. And then come. That was um, Watusi. That's from... Watusi. Oh, then, yes, and my then... fourth one will be Amanzaba. Okay. Now, the album from which Wogbe, mm -hmm. Jekke. I comes. think that was the album title. Wogbe Do you Jekke. know the album title? I think it's Wogbe Jekke. No, it's not. It's not Wogbe. It's Demara. Demara. Oh, Wogbe is right on the Demara album. Yes, oh, okay. Wogbe okay. is up the Demara okay. album. Okay, okay. And okay. there are wonderful tracks on that album as well. Mm -hmm. And then the final album I chose was mm. one by a guitarist, which we did at City Rock. Okay. I mean, I was part of the production of that album by Paulus. Mm. Okay. Paulus is a guitarist, and what he did was he picked a few of the pop, the most popular Ghanaian uh, highlight tracks, and jazzified them. He guitarized them. I, I'm still you waiting know, for it's, a change. It's, it's, what has changed? The the, the, the title of that album <laughs> is High Life Moods. Okay. You know, High Life Moods, but okay. all in the jazz vein. Now okay. that album was very popular, and before it got released somebody leaked a copy oh dear onto the market one way or the other uh -huh. and at that time every event you went to before the start of the event you'd hear that album being played, being played. because it was it was it was just lovely mood music uh -huh. you, you know what i so mean so those are your so those are those are my five don't worry we'll and come back to the conversation no, for no, no, no. production quality okay production qualities yes for you so you feel today's songs are not being well produced most of them oh. i don't i don't i don't i don't feel the production interesting all mm -hmm. right jesse mm -hmm. let's hear your five uh, that's that's yeah difference. that's the five yabba, the difference. captain yabba no because when you produce a show you said what what, what worked then no, no, and no. what's feeling now we will come to no, that no nobody said that we, to me. no no no, no. Ah, no but no. but even regardless he has mm. made his point that for him he thinks production levels are dropping or yeah. have dropped so for him, that's it. It's on production. The production level means what? It doesn't matter. What are your five? But it matters, no? <laughs> Let's hear your he five. He says we should educate Let the people. Let us hear your five, Jesse. <laughs> Is it that there's no beat now? I, 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 but, 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 I, I understandably, know. but no, but understandably, there's a difference. Yeah, ah. difference doesn't mean drop. No, I know. I have not in said. The, in, I have not in them come. days, yes. they had a more organic production. Okay, no. the eighty one of eighty forty four days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a more organic production than today. Oh, sorry, you're so, but, well, organic means what? Organic means that oh, well, they had to the actual drums. So you see, Ange, yes, Ange, without, can tell you that without tunes, they had all without... the musicians together, mm -hmm. and then they played. You played it live. Correct. They played yes. it live. Yes, band. yes, yes. But like, like band. Well, yeah. Like brass band and things yes, like that. Yes, that's more organic than. <laughs> Now that's 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 <laughs> drum pattern to the have been digitized, which is exactly so, we, exactly. Which, so, so for, for a lot of the, exactly. the for the generation for that generation. Okay, I get it. So ideally we should carry like the twenty four man band. Uh, uh, like nobody okay. has said no, that. No, I'm asking uh, uh, gentlemen, it's okay. Your microphones are your microphones are off. Your microphone Uncle okay, don't worry, the mic is off. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Don't worry, Uncle Kem, thank you very much for your list. Jesse, now your list, your five. <laughs> your list, Jesse. George, so mm -hmm. I'll do this, right? Eh? Today's music yeah. is as awesome as yesterday's music. Your five. Today's music is made for today's times. Yeah, for the, for <laughs> the, kid, for the young girls. And it makes absolute sense. We enjoyed. Yeah. Your five. So in view of that... <laughs> <laughs>
So George, okay, so let me go back. Yes. To my dance man days when I had my, <laughs> my chamber in the hall. Yeah. I'm not sure what the album is, but mm. Linda. Samini. Samini. Uh, that was, I think, on the Damkwansri album. Dan I think yeah. Dan for, me, yeah. for me, it's, it's Dan Dan it, was, it was a fantastic one. Yeah. Second one for me, again, following beat and the great music of today's generation. Otolege's album. The Otolege album. Ofuram mm-hmm. Konsa. Yeah. I think for me, that's like my second one. Fantastic one. Now, George, what, what I can tell is if uh, this particular song came as a single or it was on an album. So, Nankebe de Nayoya. Um, I think it was an album. So that's Nane Th- Champo. That's Nane Champo. Champo. Yeah. I think it was an album. Yeah. Good. So it was for, for me, because yeah. during the time this songs, song was dropped, on it. yeah, it was for me. Because apparently <coughs> those days, mm-hmm. that particular album, uh, apparently was one of the most sold albums. Yes. That particular album. Yes. That yes. That it was. And that was a period of the competition, the rivalry. Yes. Yeah. Between yeah. him yeah. and 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 DL. Yeah. So these these three again mistakenly I, I thought it was it was just about your the, the best of the no, best. No, no, doesn't matter. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm also a very deep Asher Raymond R. Kelly fan. Uh, so you went global. So I went global. Okay. So w- when I pick Asher Raymond, I would pick 8701. Ah. That <laughs> album for anybody who was in the University of Ghana between 99 and 98 ah. thereabouts. And my favorite on it, George was separated. How do I, no separated was when. You know who left me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> George and I, George, yeah, 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 yeah. Terrible, terrible. Uh, no, no, okay, that, that, Justin nearly committed suicide. Oh, <laughs> no hey, hey, yeah, you know, yeah, it was that bad. Hey, you know, hey, yeah, hey. it was that bad. You've been drama no, so we, we so had said that boy. No, some of us had to go and, me and Adam know, Lubo, call Adam Lubo. We had to go and stay in Adam Lubo. Adam wasn't on campus. So, you know, that line is very true. This line when they say broken heart, you can reach everybody. I swear. You can reach Then number two. Let's go on. R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. Love letter. Okay. When a woman loves, no, 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 I, I begged. And the then he, he, he asked for permission. <laughs> mm. Then the last one for me, I'm making a six. Mm. The Get Rich or Die Trying album. 50 cents. Okay, 50 cents. Many liked Birthday on it, mm-hmm. but I like Many Men. Mm. Yeah. Many, many men, men, many men, okay. men. Glory, da, 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 da. So that's it for, for me. That's it for you. Okay. Okay. I, I would end by saying that <laughs> the times require products of the times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and nobody has argued. Oh, about okay, this my submission. <laughs> nobody has argued about that. Oh, okay. Did I argue about that? I'm done. Did I argue about that? No, no, you didn't. I'm sorry. Yes, but you were you were you were butting into my you were butting into my submission. Okay, okay. All the time making snipe. If you don't like my music, oh, if you don't like my music, if you don't like my type of yeah. music, George, I'm being bullied. I'm being bullied. No, you're not being bullied. No, yeah, you're being no, put I, in your I, place. No, 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 it's okay. I'm let, let, let's cross over to Sadiq. Let's cross over to Sadiq. So Sadiq, your five. So, uh, mine, Reggie Rockstone's Maka Maka. I'm rich as the first album. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh-huh. Yes, I love that uh-huh. album. Ago. Yeah, Ago. Yeah. Nightlife. Night yeah, Night exactly. Ag- City, exactly, yeah, exactly. That and album then, was classic. Yeah, that, was, that was classic. And then, Almighty Pemuka. Allah. Oh, yeah. Which was, I mean, I think by far the greatest hip life album to ever have, have been made. That'd be the rap revolution period. Yeah, yes. Reggie Rockstone. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, again, I like the Kodentry Superman album that had Afro Fanto. Mm. Afro Fanto, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember that. And then in recent times, and I've always maintained this till now, I know Sarkodie has released a number of albums, but I've consistently said that of Sarkodie. all Sarkodie's, no, of all Sarkodie's album. The most epic of Sarkodie's album is the Mary album. Really? Yeah. Yes. I like Sarkodie. Sarkodie. That Mary album is timeless, and the Mary album is a kind of album that intrigues. Like they say, "We did one in future." Uh, that album was made. It was made for Sarkodie in his mm, late thirties, forties, fifties, and that album was well made. I mean, until today, I still listen. Which, to which, it. which, which, which one has like the fortune? That's a psychology one. Psychology, yes. Okay, you know, but the Mary album. Crazy, and then the recent Aquaba album. Aqua was recent yes, album, okay. The, uh, oh, what's the name? Yeah, I've forgotten the title, but the one that has posted me. Oh the, no, not posted. Oh, the new, the oh, newest. Me a copy. No, oh. the one, the one before, the one, the one that had um, he and Sarkodie's High Life album, High Life song. The one that we. we used the to one that has that a. Album. Oh, okay, okay. The one that has the TXT song with Ifia. Ifia, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, what's the title of that album? Uh, oh, how can I forget it? Title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's album. also a very solid album. That's yes, also a very, yes, very yes, solid yes, album. Yes, yes, yes. So, mm. I mean, these are for me. Okay. These are my 
Bile has also joined us. Uh, the legendary I... Bile is also in the house. Yes, we'll, we'll take some. Uh, let me give my five too. This one, uh, the, uh, producer has given me permission. The first uh -huh. on my list. So the cover album is the Matters of the Heart. Matters of the Heart, exactly. The, heart. Yeah. the first on my list is Cindy's Messiah from Cindy Thompson. I think you, you mentioned it like some two hours, two hours ago. Yes. Um, hours. That one is the one that has a Awawado. Mm. Awawado, baby. Then the second is also a gospel. Yao Sapong and Asumafo. The one that has a Okoye okay, yeah, Katri Jase, Abwebi Achi Joseph. Exactly. The third is also a gospel. Daughters of Glorious Jesus. I think um, I've forgotten the title. I don't. Um, but it's the one that has a Bibri. Bibri in Hawaii, Mama Fimo. Yes, that one. And then Paimuka would have. And then Lord Kenya. Yesum Sika would have my favorite. George, I'll yes. add Ajian, Ajiani. Yeah, uh, no, this is my five. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. This, this is my five. You so, give yours to Yaba. But George, give us one special one. Yeah. Look, one special one. Yeah. The Comic Ken album for Book Bag. Book Bag. But you see, the point is this. It is very difficult to settle on five. Because it's even Jesse difficult. crossed borders. If yeah. I cross borders, my list would have Fuji's in there. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, Nas. it would have Fuji's. It would have Nas, Nas. that I am album. Yes, that I am album from, and then it would have. It would definitely have UB40. You won't have to pack. I won't have to pack, but I would have UB40, and then of course Michael Jackson Thriller, which in my opinion is the world's best album ever made. Billy will not agree with me. So but... why do you cross carpet and some of us stayed here? Oh, but you chose Captain Yaba. Because he's I'm a, saying he's I chose Yaba because he asked me to choose Ghanaian albums. No, 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 they are not part of my five. Four. I said if I if were I to, cross. to cross. And I'm saying, give me a chance to cross. Please cross. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him cross. I mean, you. I said, please cross. cross. Please cross. I will pick Curtis Mayfield. Would you don't I, I, I don't even know him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but is it 30 years? <laughs> yes. Superfly. I'll pick the Superfly album. Mm -hmm. for Masterpiece. I'll pick uh, a wonderful lady like Anita Baker. Mm -hmm. yep. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'll go for Gladys. There's so many of them. I mean... Endless. Endless. And quality. Let's I'm come to looking Billy. at quality. Billy. Yeah. If you were to pick your top five albums in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can also cross if you want to, but we're focusing more on Ghana, but you can cross if you want to. Who and who would make your, oh, your list? Oh, I would say could you interest in your album? Definitely. That's, Classic. That, that would be one. Um, I will also, I also probably include Nana to Four, the Tonton Tain album, yeah. which I think that was, a, that was a very well produced album. I would go for CK Man. Mm -hmm. Of CK Man, um, the one with the Matwabo on it. Yeah. Um, that was that was special with the Latin rhythms in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I would also include um, Abby Krenz in the Sweet Talks, the Lord's Prayer album. Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Moses was not on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Moses was not on that album. Okay, that's solid. That's solid. Thank you very much. Um, the point is this: um, in your opinion, yeah. have the trends changed so much? Is 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 today's music? You know, I, George, I can, I can George, it, argue George, that. it's not even a, it's not even a debate. It's not even a debate. But Jesse will not agree with you. That's fine. It's a generational conversation. It, it may be a generational conversation, but so here's the thing: mm -hmm. look, a lot of the current tracks that we see yeah. in the last ten years, where's the longevity? Mm. Where's the longevity? I can pull a CK Man album and I guarantee you any party people will rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The but difference is this. Back in the day, those guys were musicians. But what do we have today? We don't have musicians. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let, let, let me make my point. Mm -hmm. When I... He said party. anybody would dance to it. Exactly. People at his party. No. Yeah, but people, no, people oh, in his generation. In his generation. Yes. He didn't say so that's why that's I said that. It's a generational thing. This conversation no, you're, is a generational thing. correcting thing. something he didn't say. He said that. Let's move on. Let's if he plays it at any yeah, of his parties, anybody will dance to it. Isn't that what he said? No, that's not what I said. What I said was, what I said was, those classics were so well put together that even if you played it to the new generation, you see them dance. Look, when we, when, when we had the, the, uh, the High Life Jam at, at um, um, Silver Star, Black and Co were pulling some of these old classics. The and 90s people, Jam. 
No, the, 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 no. the, the joy. The, okay, yeah, the, yeah, the high life jam. The high life jam. Yeah. High life jam. Yeah. Black and Co were pulling out some of these old classics, and people were just rocking to it. But if the same black had played Kwame Eugene, he didn't play Kwame Eugene. Here's the issue. Yeah. 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 There are one or two of our current generations, one or two of our current generation of musicians who are putting out some very good music. Exactly. There's no question about it. Yeah. But the majority are so repetitive. <laughs> and what you tend to see is, look, it's one of the reasons why you don't see albums. Because mm. the beats are all the same. Ain't no way. All right. Thoughts were all espoused by the man Bile, who comes up next with flashback. Gentlemen, we're going. Let me just take a few messages that I hear. This one says, uh, good afternoon, George. In fact, I can choose any album. All I can say is I enjoy all the hits from the 90s, 2015, and I'm enjoying myself now. Dagadu from Italy sent that one in. And this one says... Um, um, greetings to Uncle Ken. Oh, it's all for Oscar. I wanted to join the security because of him. Apparently, I joined the cadet at college, but today, hmm, he made me more security conscious of my surroundings, and he is always on point. Bless him. This one says, um, but why did he disappear from the screen? The voice is still there. Let him sign off the show. Please come back to our screen. We can't wait to see you back. That was for Oscar. How do you do? Great show as always. Shout out to my crush, Karen Yale. George, cause of Oscar, I wanted to be an actor because he was so good at his craft. Then boom, Ejaku and Lowen showed up. <laughs> from Nungua Pari. <laughs> George. <laughs> Earlier early, early on, I heard you. What did you. How did you define RPM? What did you say? Revolutions? What? what did you I say? didn't say revolutions. No, what did you I, I, say? Isn't it rhythms per minute or something? But what did you say? You said I, that's uh, exactly what I said. Rhythms per minute. Rhythms per minute. Yeah. Oh, uh, Billy, I'm a mobile. Menu a boy. Menu mazika. Arpi, am I wrong? Well, okay, but let's move forward, <laughs> gentlemen. We're wrapping up. <laughs> and again, final thoughts. We're going. Um, uh, uh, has got the news. We have to go. Um, in, in thirty seconds. Uncle Gun. Yeah. Anyway, oh, we, we're not here <laughs> next week. We? No, we're not. We're yeah, not. We're not we're, we're, week, so. let, let's meet at Junction Mall next week. We'll see the folks the week after. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Jesse. Uh, time changes. Time definitely changes, my and brother. And it changes with everything. Everything. <laughs> if I resurrect King Kekwaka today, yeah. King Kekwaka, he would think that the, the, the songs of 50 years ago were crap. <laughs> so it's normal. I'm done. But for me, I, think, I think it's a generational thing. I mean, definitely you would have... I mean, the, the generation one can, can because of the nostalgic effect of it and how emotive they are to their son, they hold on to it. We two on our generation. We'll yes, us. I'm mean, here's me saying, <laughs> Peimuka is one of the greatest hip life I want to have ever made. Mm. A young one today, Gen Z today, would disagree sharply yeah. with me. Mm. You know, but I mean, it's it's what was my era. It is what it is. Exactly. It is what it is. And you like some of the stuff that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I had this and I also I like had this, some of the stuff yeah, that you I had play. this argument with Daniel. So I don't before. see any reason. And I can actually for introduce me to castle. 70s music and I fell in love with it. Exactly. Like that time. And I, I, I also I, like. I also like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I also like. Uh, uh, Gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, it's been a great show. Billy comes up next with Flashback. Show was produced by the man Philip Nye. Um, in the studios, we had Billy joined us at the last end. We had a conversation with Oscar Provence. Uncle Ken, Jesse Amwejepong, and Sadiq Abdullah Abu, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Philip and uh, Manita gave us production. Uh, uh, huh, the social media, Rastaman put us on social media. O for Z. O for Z. O for Z. That's the man. Uh, they feel I'm brutal. And of course, DJ Obertin made the music happen. My name is George Quay. Catch us on the Habitat Fair next week. We're out. <laughs>